Hey guys, it's MTAVDY, and uh, but today we are back with GO! My favorite sports team. Now, I do have to be a wee bit quiet on this, right? So, if you can't hear the podcast very well, it's because I have to be quiet. Mom is currently in a important business meeting that I cannot interrupt with my loudness. So, yeah. So, I'm gonna try my best if i hear her yelling to turn it down i have to or else all hell will rain loose so yeah um i just uplo upload uploaded if i can talk i just uploaded she hulk episode 3 so if you want to see that and the full length reaction to that go to my patreon the, 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 the full length is cut like Somewhere in the between of the of the credits and like Jen walking into the asshole, her new friend and her new boss, because my phone got weird and I don't know why and I'm sorry for that Patreon, but you know it is what it is. But anyways, we are gonna go with trophies. I have never gotten a trophy. I gotten a medal in. Um, volleyball, when I did volleyball in, um, middle school, I don't know where that is now, but it's, it should be somewhere, but I know that, I think, I think my dad has run trophies, I'm not sure, but I've never won a trophy, I've run a, I've won a certificate, it's a high school certificate, but it's a certificate, that's kind of like an award, right, and I win trophies all the time on my PlayStation. I don't know if that does anything, but yeah, I've really never won any trophies. So, if you're wondering what I'm doing until I get new white yarn, I'm I found this really cool like scarf pattern, which is really nice. I'm on like I'm trying to do like this chunk of it first. You'll see it in a little bit, but I'm trying to get this whole Millennium Falcon situation. Before I do, do all these beautiful stars. But yeah. Um. Was there something else I was going to say? No, I guess that's it. Alright. Uh, without further ado, now I gotta figure out where I was. Okay. I have a bookmark right here to like do row by row, you know? Okay, so let's start this. Are you connected before we start? Please tell me that you're connected. Yes, you are. Cool. Okay. Should be in it. Up to you guys. Whenever it's ready, it loads for a little bit. Hello, elegant listeners, and welcome to Go! My favorite okay. sports team. I am Tyler, your sports knower, your king and master of balls being put in holes. That is me, and I'm here with Mark, my good friend. King and master? Yeah, I, king I, and I, master. No, I wanted to update because I have my master's degree. Uh huh. Okay. All right. What am I? You are the king and master of YouTube. Apparently, according to Anthony Padilla. Yeah, exactly. I'm not the king of YouTube. I like making YouTube. I don't know if I'll do it forever, but I enjoy the content creation process. Hell yeah. Well, you were just on set like all week this week. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, helping Sean with the thing. Yeah, he posts on social, which is why I think it's okay to say this. It was... Uh, maybe not. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, yeah, but we were on set filming some stuff. I don't think that's any big secret. And it was nice because it's one of Sean's first experiences of running his own set. A larger production. I mean, obviously, as YouTubers, we film stuff all the time. But there is a jump going from filming your own stuff with just friends and, like, roughing it, figuring it out, doing your own thing, and actually working with other people that have worked on professional jobs and have a system in place for doing all these things and an organizational structure. It is mm -hmm. different, and it's intimidating sometimes. But he did great. That's good. I just... I have had the case of the burps today. That's okay. I'll keep talking then. Uh, it, it's one of those things that I really love because I have done a lot of it. I've been on set a lot now and I'm very familiar with the process and I've learned a lot in doing so. And there's so much that you can do once you have people that really know what they're doing and are in that process. And what's even more beautiful is they're used to working in the traditional film industry or TV industry or whatever. And it's not always as fun as making YouTube videos. Sometimes it's kind of soul crushing, especially when you work with the wrong people. But I always like to make a set experience fun and productive you know well, yeah. it should be rewarding yeah because people work better when they're having fun and feel important and able to contribute to the, the entire whole because it's like this is something that we talked about on the set of in space with some of the crewmates like everybody there was excited to work on this mm -hmm. so much so that everybody was like mark's doing a thing i want to be on that <laughs> yeah 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 they're, um, they're chomping at the bit for the next one exactly <laughs> i i i'm aware because i've gotten a few messages like have you oh, when's this coming up when are we gonna get something what's mark writing because i heard yeah. he was writing something yeah 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 i've heard i've heard those same whispers on the wind <laughs> as well what is mark writing i don't know <laughs> writing in your uh what was it that you were doing some sort of journal bullet journaling back in the day i tried that i wasn't really too into it i like paper writing but at the same time it's hard to keep track and i don't always bring a notebook with me i uh i've tried a few like digital versions but nothing really sticks i just write in whatever is nearby and well, that's it speaking of journaling mm -hmm. we have some journalism news of oh. current events oh, da -da -da -da. wait let me get the music oh yeah i i it's time for the news, everyone. Welcome to your favorite sports news show. It is live with Mark and Tyler here to give you the updates on your favorite bits of news and bops of information here. Thank you all so much for being wonderful listeners. We are ready and ripping and raring to go with the various things that we have in store for you, including some sports. Yeah. Yeah, of course. We're talking about sports here because this is a sports podcast called Go My Favorite Sports. What? Team. What? It's live with oh. Mark and Tyler oh. for sports in the sports world. Here's your current events. I don't know. I got it. We got a new. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just got a few more buttons here. I had to do something. But this is where you insert the current events, uh, Will. In the sports today, Mark. Uh huh. You know, there's a couple of things that people have been griping about on the subreddit, and it's the fact that I haven't talked about the WNBA. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to, because the WNBA playoffs have kicked off. The Los Angeles Aces just moved on to the semifinals by beating Phoenix. I want to stop you right there, because sense. I know enough about sports to know that basketball doesn't do a kickoff. You sure. got him. Okay, tipped off. <laughs> Is that better? Is that better, Mark? <laughs> So, I mean, technically, it would be more correct. I know that that's one of those words. I think we may have not discussed that in the episode. But, yeah, usually when something starts, now you say, it kicked off. Hit. They don't say it tipped off. That's a little different. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. But, anyway, Los Angeles Aces. Oh, my the God. Am one. I dumb? Is it Las Vegas Aces? <laughs> <laughs> Please you think the master balls out. and holes would know this. God damn it! The master today. <laughs> you, we're starting over. No, 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 no. All right, all right. The Las Vegas Aces have moved on to the uh, semifinals by defeating the Phoenix Mer Mer Mercury. The Phoenix Mercury. We are starting very early in the morning, so I'm going to give Tyler a pass on this one. Uh, <laughs> but I should be the tired one. Like, I was. Uh, we were on set all day the past three days. What were you doing last night? I was up till 3 a.m. Okay, why? Cleaning up my place because construction stuff and a few other things are going on. Hardly an excuse, but I will excuse you. Listen, I had to come to the studio, mm -hmm. rip stuff off the walls, uh -huh. <laughs> come back to my place. I, I went for a long bike ride on my nice e-bike. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're talking about the current sports. Okay. Las Vegas Aces beat Phoenix Mercury 
two mm-hmm. games to none because they play a best of three. Which, by the way, why is it that they again like tennis? They play less games than the NBA. That that bothers me because every NBA playoff game is best of seven once it gets to best of like, seven this point versus best of three. Yeah, that I, is significantly that's less. yeah wow insanely different. Mm-hmm. Seattle plays Washington tonight for their best of three. Right now, Seattle leads one game to none. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chicago and New York are tied in their series one to one, and mm-hmm. Connecticut in Dallas, Connecticut is up one game to nothing in the first round. But right now, it is a competition to get to the finals. Mm -hmm. Best of three in the first round, best of five for the semis, and then they play in the finals best of five. Okay. And Chicago is trying to defend their title Uh while Las Vegas has the number one seed. Okay. Another thing that's happening in the world is the English Premier League has kicked off what is that? What is that? That is the premier, the top echelon, as most would say, uh-huh. of football. Man, Tyler's of body just football. contorted in a very bizarre way to say whatever the hell he just <laughs> said. <laughs> like did a yoga pose midair, he started hovering off the ground. It was very bizarre. But the English Premier League is the primary league in Europe for soccer. Uh So it's the professional soccer league. Mm -hmm. And that has officially kicked off as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. So soccer is happening. Soccer is happening. When is the soccer primer? It will probably be just before the World Cup, which I believe is in October. Why are you asking me? No, I, why no, would I know? No, I'm lying. It's not in October. <laughs> the World Cup, I believe, is in December. Uh, no, wait. Oh, okay. it's coming to me now. All right. When the is psychic, the World Cup? The psychic messages of when ah! these things start. It starts oh! at the end of November. Oh! <laughs> I was doing the before and the after and not the current. He exists in the future and the past simultaneously. He does not exist. That's why he was kind of wispy. I thought you were weirdly translucent today. (laughs) God, bring yourself back. You're going to be lost to the strands of time. And the last thing that's huge going on in the world of sports today is the Little League World Series is... Steeries? The The World Series? I know it's early, but we really got to get professional here. (laughs) All right, I'll get professional. 2022 Little League World Series has begun. The first pitch was thrown out today. I didn't say you had to be more dramatic, but I appreciate it. You're welcome. You want an effect? We have a new mixer, so... We now have different voice effects that we can do and really bother Will because of the inconsistencies that he won't be able to apply globally to the entire wave file. Uh, He probably doesn't like this very much, but I think we should do it anyway. What do you think? That was quite demonic. All right. I was shook into my core. Could you even understand anything that I said? Not really. Barely. All right. Well, moving on back to sports. My fun toys don't even matter anymore. No, they matter. Yeah. I just wasn't paying attention, so. <laughs> <laughs> They matter, I just don't care. All right, then, fine. No, the Little League World Series has kicked off. There are numerous teams vying to win the Little League World Series all Mm -hmm. across the United States and into other countries as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Other countries are participating in Little League, which is baseball. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. So there's Team Japan, Latin America, Korea. I know Korea and Japan love baseball. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So uh, Asia South Pacific has moved on against Europe and Africa. The Great Lakes have defeated the Midwest. Mm. The Southeast beat New England and also just beat Mountain. For some reason in my head, I thought that meant the Great Lakes flooded and then a sweeping (laughs) torrent of water rushed through the Midwest and took it all out. I'm like, what happened? Jesus. Canada beat Japan. In war? What? No, in the Little League World Series. It really sounds like... I don't expect a Little League team to be like selected down to an entire country. So, so that's why it's weird. So if you've never watched the Little League World Series, uh, on the left-hand side of the bracket okay. for the two different regions right. are both United States. So half one side... Man, you were really dribbling coffee today. I'm dribbling coffee. You're dribbling words. Carry on. We're even. <laughs> We're the same. Mine doesn't affect the podcast in any way. Until it drips on your computer. Or, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Hey, uh, but on the left-hand side of the bracket is the United States, and on the right-hand side are all the international teams. Mm-hmm. So okay. at the end of the day, it's going to end up being international versus United States for the World Series championship. So here's my question, though, because this seems very strange to me. I have never heard of another sport where the Little League, basically the children's league of that sport, 
is played on an international stage. At least not in the sense that I can think of for for televised. Yeah, because aren't there like minor leagues that aren't even televised of adult really capable yes. uh, baseball players, but yes. somehow the children playing, what's the audience? Same age, age group or younger. Yes. I mean, yeah. even like a lot of parents like to watch it. Huh. Um, I know I've watched Little League World Series like when I was growing up on occasion. Mm -hmm. I actually could have been in the Little League World Series, fun fact. But my my dad and my coach didn't believe in creating an all-star team to compete in the uh -huh. city tournament to try and get to that point. But So it's really just a hypothetical. You have no idea if you could have gotten to I mean, Little League I, Championship. I was considered a star. Man. <laughs> I was a star player. Uh huh. Definitely. I was too great at being an outfielder. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> because I'm trying to be nerdy. Uh huh. Oh, why is it nerdy? No, it's a sport. It would exactly. Be, it I'm nerdy be... about my sport. All right. Whoa, man. That's okay. Yeah. We can talk about it the next time we do sports life. But anyway, the Little League World Series, it's really cool because, like you said, mm -hmm. international teams are able to come and compete as well. I believe the reason they have them separated in two different sides is so that international doesn't all have to come to the United States to play. Mm -hmm. They find neutral territory elsewhere. That's my education educated guess. Uh -huh. I might be wrong. I very well could be wrong. Okay. And then the United States obviously is all the different regions that qualified and then they play against each other. Okay. Um to try and get in on that side. So Who who's the favorite to win in the world? I know in the US Hawaii has been doing really well. Mm -hmm. But they're not listed on this bracket, and I don't know why. What's the age range, by the way? Uh, of the Little League World Series? Yeah. Let me verify that, because I remembered it as being one thing, and I want to make sure I'm right. Okay. I believe it's just like, yeah, I was going to say under 13, but it's a 10 to 12-year-old. 10 to 12. Okay, so at some point in this chain of events, some 10 to 12-year-old is going to win the International Little League Championship. I mean, I mean they team of them, yeah. but one team. of them is going to be the MVP of that team, right? Correct. So at some point, a 10 to 12 year old child's entire worldview is going to be destroyed by being declared as the greatest 10 to 12 year old baseball player in the world. And then won't that cause their ego to collapse within themselves when they go back home and return to normality? I mean, we can talk about this in an actual episode about like child <laughs> stardom and how possible little league series the way it's televised and mm -hmm. broadcast affects people yeah. because the other thing is like i've watched a little league world series and i've had a big issue on occasion where sportsmanship is shit yeah that's a huge thing yeah yeah there was that one video that where it wasn't little little league but maybe it was the age range where a pitcher hit a batter with the ball and they they went down they went ooh, 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 and then the pitcher felt really bad and then the batter mm. got up and was like i'm okay and then went over and gave the pitcher a hug because the pitcher was kind of distraught of like oh my god i hit so and oh no yeah that's the best depiction of sportsmanship that i've seen in a long time but there were many people who were like sharing that around being like now this is what's wrong with sports today it's like come on so oh, what are you hugging it out like where well, like and it's like what the Oh, Dude, he hit him in the head. He was, like, he was distraught They're because children. he thought he like really hurt the dude. Yeah, and I think and it was he like... felt so bad that people were gonna make him out to be like throwing at the batter. Yeah, and it was some dude from like um, Barstool Sports, I think it's called. Oh yeah. yeah, I don't know what his name is, but he was like talking about like you gotta take care of, uh, take advantage of every opportunity, make it better, man. the psychological game of the sport. And it was just like just a bunch of douchebaggery. Uh, but it was just like, what is wrong? <laughs> Sports are meant to be fun, especially for kids and it's like if if i threw a pitch and i hit you in the head and you were on the opposite team even if i didn't know you i would be like oh god no no i'd be oh. distraught so there's a story about this we were playing baseball right and i was a pitcher yeah and so i was throwing and missing the plate because this, this team was taught to crowd the plate so that i wouldn't throw over the strike zone mm -hmm. and my dad came out and he's like tyler i know you don't want to hit them but throw the ball to the glove, and if they don't move, they don't move. Mm -hmm. And the next pitch, I nailed this batter because he was all over the plate, and he was on the ground rolling around, kicking and crying, and the other coach was screaming like, he did that on purpose, which is not at all what I was taught. Uh -huh. I was taught, throw it to the glove. Yeah. And I was huffing and puffing on the mound because I was upset. Yeah. And my dad came out to check on me, and he, he's going, Tyler, are, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, he didn't move. <laughs> <laughs> 
I felt so bad though, yeah. but I was like angry that he didn't move. I don't think this coach teaches his team wrong just to, just because it's funny. Like you see him in the dugout, he's got he's all cross-eyed. He's like, he was right over his he did that on the first, he was ten feet away from the plate. And oh my god, how could it do this to my boy? And it's just like, like well, I mean, I think like it's the most asinine strategy. Yeah, stand over the plate. Ain't nothing bad could happen to you. <laughs> no way. This kid ain't throrin' hard enough. And, and he I can throw like hard. A little baby, he ain't gonna do nothing to you. He got noodle arms. He ain't gonna do sling that ball any faster than he. I got in his eyes really far apart. Apparently, I <laughs> wasn't idiot. And he says he's got weakness inside of him. He won't hit you. <laughs> like it was really silly. I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> conversation. Like I plan on doing an episode about coach qualifications and why they need to be better. Yeah, I'm qualified. <laughs> what are you talking about? You want to see my degree? Come to my trunk. Anyway, That's don't, keep my degree. Don't what are you solicit, saying? don't take candy from strangers. Don't go to anybody's trunk. Uh, kids, if trunk? you're listening to this, uh, if somebody offers you that, call an adult and His whole run away. car is like five feet laterally offset. <laughs> 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 He's the guy that parks in the parking garage and he's like a foot over the line. He's like, I'm dead center. <laughs> <laughs> he's a mechanic and so like his one wheel's like way further back than the other. <laughs> his backup camera's on a boom pole sticking out to the side. <laughs> what do you mean, officer? <laughs> I didn't see nothing. <laughs> Can we get back on topic, please? He have a fork that's like got a 90 degree <laughs> bend because he keeps missing his mouth. Damn this. <laughs> Mm, delicious. Can we please get Dude, back to just thinking time. about his toilet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's peeing in the bathtub. He's shitting on the floor next to <laughs> Damn Japanese toilet. Can't do anything right. He's in the dugout chucking popcorn in his face. He's hitting the guy behind him. <laughs> Duh, missed. <laughs> oh. They don't make him like they used to. Oh. Anyway, yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> next topic, please. This episode of Go is sponsored by Stamps.com. Tyler, why are you laughing? I'm laughing because I came up with a great idea on how to use Stamps.com. Okay. I am going to send out all of my individual hairs from my OnlyFans.com slash Pyfro. You have an OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead with your okay, idea. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, I was here to tell you that Stamps.com uh, is your 24-7 post office that you can access from everywhere. You can skip the headache with Stamps.com because for more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses, giving you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. So you could sell your hair and sell individually to other people. Can you do that? Can you just send hair? Can you? Can you send, like, other... Hold on, I'm Googling if you Detrims. can mail body parts. <laughs> Hair's technically a body part, right? I mean, I... It says you can. Mail. It just has to be marked on this side that it's exempt human specimen. If you do that, are you just like totally good? Any human body part for any reason, slap it in a box. No, I think it has to be a specific part of the human body that you're allowed to ship, but- Like what? Listen, it just says exempt human specimen or exempt animal specimen as appropriate. Who's exempting this? This is according to USPS. Interesting. Don't mail and ship the hard way. Sign up with stamps.com today. Sign up with the promo code GOSPORTS for a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code G-O-S-P-O-R-T-S. All right, well, now it's time to confront you with a few things. We'll keep it short. We have, like, pretty much half the episodes these days as events and, and this costing, but I'm going to... Oh, goodness, do I have an effect for this? Uh, no. That high pitch really got me. <laughs> Anyway, I'm possessed now. So, Sharp Tacos asks, is there a sport more boring to watch than soccer? Boring? Oh, God. So Excuse me. Oh, wow. I oh, don't know. Soccer, boring. Oh, no. mm -hmm. I think it's just because you don't understand the massive amounts of nuance to the game of soccer. Is that and the fact thing? that the athletic requirements of being able to not only sprint 
quickly, dribble the ball, kick the ball precisely where you want to kick it, and at the same time have the endurance to do it for an insane amount of time on a field much larger than a football field, a American football field. I'm sorry you don't appreciate that kind of athleticism. It is exciting. I love the World Cup. I love watching soccer. Cincinnati has a new Major League Soccer team as a few years ago. FC Cincinnati. They're great. You just need to pay attention to it and actually go to an event because at a soccer game, the environment is immaculate. It's I so fun. But how can once. I understand the nuance of sport when you haven't done a soccer it's prime? Coming. All right. Oh. It's been banished away. All right. So uh, Amanda, but with an X in the middle, A-M-X-N-D-A, says the sweepy thing with the big puck is not a sport. The sweepy thing? Are you talking about curling? Maybe. I don't know. The sweepy thing with a big puck? Sweepy thing with a big puck is apparently for, not a sport. First of all, curling is a sport. The <laughs> amount of technical, like, precise movements, the spinning of the stone, by the way, to make it curve the correct direction, having the proper amount of strength without too much or too little to have it land in the right spot. Also to plan ahead and accurately use geometry and physics to have things bounce and don't even talk to me about this not being a sport. It requires strength. It requires insane amount of muscle control. It requires teamwork and communication with sweeping and knowledge and planning. It is so strategic and so precise. It absolutely is a sport. All right, well, that's uh, settled then. Curling is a sport, according to Tyler. Here's another one. This is a more specialized prod. I'm ready. H-I-E-I-2-K-7 says, The Cincinnati Bengals will suffer Super Bowl loss hangover and will not win the AFC North this year. I mean, that's a real thing. Is they it? talk about Super Bowl hangover being a thing. First of all, uh, how dare you come after my team? You must be a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Their, their, my dad uh, is. icon is a red truck, if that helps at all. That doesn't help. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I know who they are from uh, the Discord, though. Oh, yeah? I know where you are. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> At least on the Discord. Uh, um, no, I mean, it's very possible. There's a number of things going on in the Cincinnati Bengals training camp right now. Joe Burrow, the all-star quarterback that we love and appreciate. Yes. He had his appendix burst and had to have burst. an appendectomy. Oh, whoa. I had covered <laughs> up that. that. <laughs> an appendectomy uh -huh. right when training camp started. Oh. So he's been recovering. He's looking pretty good. He's thrown some picks in training camp. But the biggest thing is they've become stronger on the offense offensive line they've gotten better at a number of different positions particularly in that area and their depth has shown off it's a question of whether jesse Bates will play because he's been holding out for a new contract he's a star safety for the Bengals. Mm -hmm. but i think they're going to do well the biggest thing is the ravens are now going to be a little more healthy if they can stay healthy they're going to be a lot more difficult for the Bengals to play against in the afc north the browns are going to be significantly weaker in my opinion because deshaun watson rightfully so got suspended for most of the season should have been the whole season in my opinion opinion and the Steelers have gotten better in a number of areas but at the same time they're going to have to deal with a brand new quarterback and a new system this year so uh, I think right now if I were to predict the AFC North if the Ravens stay healthy they might win the whole thing but the Bengals are the team to beat and everybody keeps sleeping on them and they only got stronger they didn't lose any key positions mm -hmm. If anything, they've gotten deeper at the key positions. They're wide receivers, they're tight end in Hayden Hurst, and their defense is healthy again, and they've strengthened up their cornerbacks and defensive backs with the draft picks and a few other things. So they're looking pretty good. But All right. at the end of the day, in the NFL, a lot of times it comes down to which team stays the healthiest. I mean, so long as they get back there in the less than 30 years, you know, that's a, that that's a win. End. That's a win. I think so. And, you know, but uh, hey, if it doesn't happen, I guess I'll have to settle for a participation trophy. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that brings us to our next segment. What? Oh, that's an effect. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's still on. All right. <laughs> you know it, you love it. This is uh, Sport Talk with Mark and Tyler, the sport experts in the sport world. I'm going to shut up now. I hate myself. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, it's a terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so today's topic, like Mark got into, is about trophies. Uh-huh. Trophies. Not participation trophies specifically, but trophies in general. Well, 
the overarching topic is trophies. Okay. But the main thing that people are we're going to get into a discussion with later on mm -hmm. is participation trophies. Okay. And the reason for that is because you can only talk so much about just trophies. Uh -huh. Cuz it's like, oh, it's an animated object. Oh, what is it? Oh, where would it come from? Yeah, then it's you're like, like out of topic. I, I didn't even think about it as being a part of sports until you just mentioned it uh, before we started recording this one. And it's just like, oh, yeah, trophies. That is a thing. And it's kind of like unique to sports. But also, like, there are performance trophies in a lot of ways. It's basically a rock, right? It yeah. all boils down. This is, you did it. You did it. Here's a rock. I put a number one on it. You and one. Here's another rock. Two. It's slightly smaller. Don't worry. That's for that guy. Three is for that girl over there. And then, like, that's what it is. It's just something. Something to say, you did it. Here's a record of what you did. Yeah, it's to mark an achievement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's the whole thing about trophies. So, okay. um, before we get into it, I know you've gotten some trophies. I know you've got... <laughs> What can I say? You've won awards, you've yeah. won in sports, you've done oh, a few yeah. things. So talk about some of the trophies that you've gotten and what they mean or don't mean to you and what they're for. Oh, there's so many. How can I pick? Oh, man, I, I've got to sort through my mental library of all the trophies I've won. Uh, God, man, I haven't stepped inside my trophy room in a spell. Well, I mean, I go in there every week for all the accolades that I win. I have to put it somewhere, you know. Oh, man, just so many. Where do I begin? Give me a pick a random letter in the alphabet, and I'll, I'll, I'll guess I'll... Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know you were going to go with that? Oh, uh, what do you mean? Okay, anyway, so um, I guess, you know, as a kid, various trophies here. I, I stole a blue ribbon once and pretended like I won a competition. I didn't. Um, oh, was that the one where you backed up backwards? Yeah. Like the, the I, you talked about it on Distractable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were uh, on a stage and everybody just kind of watched you. Do yeah, it. yeah, I know. <laughs> don't want to talk about it i think i got like third or second in a wrestling competition at some point i got kind of like one or two of those and then track and field you know i did okay uh, in track and field that was more ribbons and medals as opposed to trophies i don't have that many trophies and I, I don't think there's that many that have survived that long and when i got to making youtube the trophies that i have are streamies which are nice they're lovely i have a few of those on my mantle and then there's i guess the trophy of the diamond play button mm -hmm. the various other play buttons from youtube i guess yeah those are just accolades but i'm not a collectible so a guy so they just kind of sit around yeah um you also have other awards that technically qualify as trophies you know which ones how do you know um you're make a wish one. Oh, plaques right yeah. yeah yeah that would qualify yeah you got that trophy for like best margarita the taco trophy yeah i got it from rachel ray rachel ray hand delivered that well i mean she was in the room so she handed it to me <laughs> <laughs> for best mixed drink at this strange thing. I forget what it was for. I think it was at a YouTube creator summit. I can't remember. But yeah. yeah, we were broken up into teams. And, you know, uh, it was like it was supposed to be like making a taco. And also it had to have a drink component. And I, I used to be a bartender. I'm not saying I'm good at bartending or could even remember most of the basic drinks at this point. And I only bartended for like a month. But I was like, I'll take a crack at it. I don't even remember what I made. It was just like some orange thing. I don't fucking know. I mean, it must have been delicious because you won best drink. So. Oh, well, I mean, I think what only did is like I salted the rim. <laughs> That's all I did. Because it was a because it, it was, was a, supposed margarita. To be a margarita, right? So it was like I made some orange margarita and I salted the rim, and no one else did. Everyone just like put ice in a glass and poured the things in, and I was like, they didn't have a blender, so it had to be like it, I couldn't blend it. So, so it was, it was like, on the rocks. It was just on the rocks, but I I got a shaker, you know, and it salted the rim, and boom, and it, I win because no one else tried. <laughs> that's, like, <laughs> that's all I did. Anyway, but that's a trophy. That's probably the trophy I'm most proud of. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Because I remember when I first came out. Um, seeing that trophy and asked you what it was and you went on a whole spiel yeah. about it and it was really cool. It's just because it was unexpected. <laughs> well, and that's that's the great thing for me is the way I look at trophies, it's like a conversation starter or it's mm -hmm. just a reminder of like your actual accomplishment. So yeah. like I have a bunch of trophies mm -hmm. and we grew up in the era of participation oh, trophies. A bunch of trophies yeah. No, no. Oh, we grew up in the era of participation trophies so I have a bunch of trophies for participating. Was that an era? Yeah. Oh. It started, uh, we'll get into it later, but it started like in the like 
eighties, nineties mm-hmm. was the participation trophy started becoming a big thing. But like, I remember growing up and my dad had this giant golf trophy because my dad was actually really good at golf. Okay. And then he kind of had to choose the family life. So like he played golf when I was really little and then he kind of laid off because he wanted to be there for when me and my brother did sports and to help, you know, obviously all the different responsibilities a parent has of taking care of their kids. So we just didn't have the time to go golfing all the time. Mm-hmm. But he had this huge trophy, and me and my brother would fight over who got to have it in their room just because it was a big trophy. <laughs> we knew nothing about it. We didn't even know it was for golf until we got older, but we're like, I want the big trophy in my room, and it was my dad's trophy. Yeah, yeah, okay. And his one rule was like, as long as you don't damage it, it's fine. But And but, then you damaged it. No, we, I never did. It's your brother. Oh, your no. brother Some then? piece fell off eventually. He broke one of my trophies. I got a soccer trophy at one point. It broke. The only reason I'm upset that that trophy broke is because that was the team I was on with Matt Smith, who passed away when I had my kidney transplant. Okay. He was a friend of mine. Well, I have to ask, before we go any further, Yeah. what was the first trophy? The first, the very first trophy. Yeah, we gotta go into the, the history. Very first. We can't talk about it. So it was your very okay, first right? trophy. So, right. my very first trophy uh-huh. was probably my second place. It's a medal now. I'm oh, not talking about oh, your the first very trophy. first trophy. The first the trophy. First. I'm talking on a pedestal. The first it's a weird cup. I want to know what the first thing of that ever. is. Ever. I'm pretty sure the first, the very first trophy mm-hmm. that was created was one called um because there were always like various other ones on record like contemporary trophies and stuff like that but mm-hmm. it depends on like going to ancient greece with the olive branches that they put around the head of the champion of the olympics yeah. in the event the laurel wreath yes yes is that what it said when your search yeah i have some history here so chalice i had forgotten about this word chalice, chalice. by the way act one History of trophies. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. Anyway, so chalices are a fancy term for cups. They're a very special cup. I don't know what the definition of chalice is, but you can look it up. You it, Just think of a cup with way too many bits and bobs and dangly bits. I can tell you this type of trophy is officially called a loving cup trophy. A loving cup. A loving cup. Yep. Chalices were given to winners of sporting events at least as early as the very late 1600s in the New World. For example, the Kip Cup made by silversmith Jesse Kip, a small two-handed sterling cup in the Henry Ford Museum, was given to the winner of a horse race between two towns in New England in about 1699. Chalices, particularly, are associated with sporting events and were traditionally made in silver. Winners of horse races and later boating and early automobile races were the typical recipients of these trophies. The Davis Cup, the Stanley Cup, America's Cup, and numerous World Cups are now famous cup-shaped trophies given to sports winners which is interesting because now i realize that a lot of these competitions are called the world cup or something cup stanley cup yada yada yep. it's referring to the chalices the yep. cup shape of them and is it because they would drink out of it they would pour wine in it booze moonshine well i mean it was a status symbol so like obviously you would bring your own chalice to wherever you ate and had <clears throat> shared drinks and and food with uh, so when you were able to have that golden rubied chalice to drink right. out of it was a status symbol it's like they've done something we gotta bring that back everyone bring your best cup to whatever your event you're at and like this is my cup this is mine <laughs> shit's the whole table <laughs> this is the stanley cup <laughs> <laughs> then that coach comes in this is my cup like crooked <laughs> 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 oh my god mark is modern <laughs> i don't think it's modern art i don't know if that one qualifies and tries to pour in it, like splashing all over the table. Yeah, but the the history of trophies and awards dates back to ancient times. Like some things that were considered trophies, if you've ever been to Rome or France or anything like that, a lot of archways are significant achievements of war or other things. They they were the trophies that they would have. Um, it goes back to hunting, like hunting trophies. You have you like you put dismembered animal parts on the wall that are taxidermy but like all of that stuff was like the old trophies like when you conquered a civilization you would technically take their belongings and those would be the trophy and so that's kind of the original origin and then it evolved into like sporting events like chalices or the all twisted olive branches back in ancient greece yeah see the, i i totally get the like where that originates from everyone wants a record of something it's like you know you take a little piece yeah i 
I don't like it, but you know, it happens with like you hunt and you cut the head off for some reason. I just don't get like someone rolls in with a cup, you know, so look what I did. And then someone rolls in with like, I don't know, a big horn or something like, look what I did. And then someone like, oh yeah, and then opens up a bloody satchel, flap. And look what I did and throws a decapitated head on the table. And everyone's just like, oh God, that's so cool. And then like everyone starts doing it. I just don't know. Yeah, I mean, following a successful battle, Greek troops often constructed trophies from the arms and armor of captured opponents. Why? <laughs> Why? Arms, like, arms are arms like weapons. It just says arms? I'm hoping we're thinking of weapon I'm arms. I'm hoping weapons. I'm hoping not weapons. Physical arms? Really aiming for weapons here, or else it's gonna get, it's getting real, like, uh, yeah. winds of winter, you know? I don't know. But yeah, like you said, the, the chalice became the major form. It was a two-handed cup giving the winners of sporting events mm -hmm. as early as the 17th century. Mm -hmm. And they're still used today, obviously, like you mentioned with like the Stanley Cup and various stuff like that, uh, the World Cup. And then obviously as we got later, we started getting more elaborate, more intricate with our designs, mm -hmm. um, creating things like the Lombardi Trophy, which is a football on this giant pillar. It's made by Tiffany, which Tiffany actually makes almost all of the major league sport trophies oh yeah in the u.s okay so like the lombardi trophy the stanley cup is made by tiffany and co the like afc and nfc winners in football the world series trophy like mvp trophies the naismith trophy in basketball all of those are made by tiffany and co mm -hmm. um but the biggest thing is that custom trophy design became a big thing in the modern age mm -hmm. uh thanks to the diversity of materials and the various different manufacturing processes and obviously more and more skilled designers being able to work with more and more different materials okay that's so. good <coughs> that is the history of trophies yes but to get even further there's four specific different types of trophies there's the contemporary trophy, which is the most common now. It's usually a depiction of the event commemorated, and it's more, like, customized. It also is the, like, Oscars are con considered a, a contemporary trophy. Sure. They're usually made with plastic figures and marble bases. That's what we grew up getting most of the time. You have your loving cup trophy that we talked about. Loving the hunting trophies yeah. that we talked about, which mm -hmm. are mostly, like, heads of deer. Mm -hmm. Or even, like, fur and skin rugs. Sure. And then you have perpetual trophies. Perpetual trophies. Yes, which are the Liberty Bell. It's a trophy that is when UC plays Miami University of Ohio. They basically are forever in existence, and whoever wins gets to keep it. It's the Stanley Cup is an example of a perpetual trophy. The Liberty Bell? I mean, like, are, is the it the Liberty Bell? Liberty I don't Bell? think it's the Liberty Not Bell. Not the Liberty Bell, but it's like trophy. The Liberty, there's a Liberty Bell trophy? trophy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was confused. I thought they took <laughs> the, the Liberty Bell, the, the one Liberty with the big Bell. crack in it. No, which no, I, no. To this day, I don't know what it's for, and I don't want to know what it's for. Uh, it's such a myth of why that exists. All I knew is, like, that's one of those things in, in your childhood that is so much importance is placed on that without ever giving context of why so as a kid that sticks out in your head for some reason i know the liberty bell exists i know it's a thing and i know it's real important and i know it has a crack in it i don't know anything else about it and i don't want to know anymore so i call it the liberty bell trophy it's the victory bell trophy for the mm -hmm. miami uc rivalry uh... um the liberty bell trophy actually is for a bowl game but it's also a perpetual trophy. A lot of bowl game trophies are passed around. Wait, is the Victory Bell trophy a guy ripping his shirt off and going... No, no, it's guy. an actual bell. I don't know why that came up until <laughs> when I looked up Victory Bell. Oh, which is the one where at the, at the football game, the guy's ringing it real fast, but it looks like he's jerking it into a bell. What's that? It's not a football game. I saw it. I have no idea what you're you know, talking about. You know, I have no clue what you're you talking know. about. I have no you clue. Know. No clue. All right, Act two. Uh-huh. This is where we get into participation. Okay. The good, the bad, the ugly. Wow. Okay. So, long has there been a debate about whether participation trophies are good or bad for development of athletics. Okay. So, obviously, the main good thing that it brings about is the fact that more and more people get interested in participating in sports. It brings about people wanting to play because they're going to get something for it. And usually when you enroll in sports, you pay for that. Mm -hmm. 
because you got to pay for uniforms, you got to pay for the umpires or referees or officials or whatever, all of that stuff, there's usually a fee at the beginning. And so it's one of those things where it increases interest in being a part of that sport because you get something from it. Mm-hmm. So some of the major like good things that it does, participation trophies are positive reinforcement right? Mm -hmm. So you're giving them reinforcement for the fact that they're going and trying sports. They're interested in it. They're coming and participating. They're doing physical exercise. They're learning skills. They're they're coming to the practices and doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, how we had like perfect attendance stuff in school. Sure. It's one of those things that it's like, okay, you... You stuck it out. You did everything. You were there. You showed up, but you showed up the best. No, no, you just showed up. The, the perfect attendance? That you showed up the best. Well, yeah, to you, get you, to perfect you showed up the most. To get to perfect attendance, you had to have overcome and fought some pretty arduous things because it's not like you could never have been sick. It's a bad thing to yeah. go to a public <laughs> space while you're sick. I don't like it. But it is a challenge as opposed to just showing up. I mean, it's a challenge to not be sick. If they if they just gave awards that was like an attendance trophy, <laughs> it's just like you went to school, which I guess is a diploma. <laughs> you know, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> A diploma is just a big participation. I mean, it, depending on your degree, I guess maybe. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, but at the same time, it's like that's kind of like what it is. There, it's it's a little elevated. Yeah, perfect. Come on, you gotta give it to those disease spreaders. <laughs> Well, the other the other thing that it does is it teaches important values, right? Okay, sure. It teaches you to be dedicated to stuff. It teaches you to show up because half the battle in in a lot of things is life is just showing up. Mm, okay. And so, like, it teaches the important values because it gets you in the door. And maybe during that time, you're learning teamwork, you're sharing, you're putting in the effort, you're putting in hard work, you're practicing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can admit, growing up, there were people that showed up but didn't pay attention to the practice. They were out there picking grass, but that's a whole other story. <clears throat> But it teaches important values in the sense of, like, committing to something. Sure, right. sure. The other thing, it elevates their success. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, you know, you get something. It makes you feel good when you're given something. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, when you're able to, to receive that. And and we are already know with the advent of the internet and various other things, there's bullying, there's all kinds of other stuff that happens. And so being able to be like, you know what, I did that. And being able to have that. Is cool, and I'm able to have a better memory. And I'll be completely honest about this with the participation trophies that I have. I'm able to actually recall when I see those trophies that season or that team to some degree. Okay, so, so it's like a reminder. What it sounds like is it had a positive impact on your life. In a way, not. I'm not saying it's wholly good, but from what you're saying, it sounds like it had yeah. a positive impact. You can look back and you'd be like, I did that thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then obviously with all of that, and I've kind of already talked about it, it increases self-esteem. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the bad. The bad. bad. Okay. The bad part. Oh, that was the good. That's all the good things that. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. And for those of you that don't know the what participation trophies are, you get a trophy just just for being a part of something. Now in the context, (laughs) you were saying the good segment and I at the end of it going like, well, that sounds good. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Convinced that yeah, real good across the bar. I'm good. <laughs> There's a reason that it's the good, the bad, oh, and the ugly. Now and I, I, should, I get it. I've connected the dots, everyone. I've connected it. I am smart. An argument for why it's bad. An argument, okay. Is it kills competition? Fuck you. <laughs> Jesus, okay. Don't need to be that rude, Mark. <laughs> Just fuck you. <laughs> It kills competition. Mm-hmm, okay. Because the belief is not everyone should feel like they're a winner all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we didn't win. I still get a trophy. I, I personally don't have this similar belief, but it's one of those things that it's like you lose an opportunity that motivates people to work harder. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because it's one of those things to where if I get it regardless of what I do. Mm-hmm. Why should I try to win all the time or work to improve or to better myself? Okay. Because it's like, I'm getting a trophy anyway. I can just dance around and show up. I'm not going to work on learning the skills. Mm -hmm. That's their argument with it, killing competition. Okay. The other one is it promotes narcissism. 
not so asleep? psychologically speaking, a study that was done earlier this year, apparently, that when people are overvalued, mm -hmm. in this particular sense, it's students, they were more likely to develop narcissistic traits, such as entitlement and superiority. Okay. And that's something that obviously a lot of people look at. And we've talked about this briefly, not in this podcast, but how there are some people out there that have this sense of like, they deserve something. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how much effort, how much work they put in, they deserve this. Mm -hmm. And we've experienced it in various different aspects of life. And a lot of people attribute part of this to the participation trophy era. Uh -huh. Because it's one of those things that it's like, even if they're not exceptional, even if they haven't put in the work, even if they haven't done anything, they're like, they still get something. Uh -huh. And so there's people that are out there that are like, oh, I'm not getting this. I should get this. Right. Okay. So that's like, and the fact that there's a study that actually shows that is, is even bigger. There's another study, not to interrupt, but there's another study that's kind of in a similar vein. It's mm -hmm. more in terms of education and childhood, like independent development. And it talks about this thing, and I'm butchering this, like I'll, I'll get some things wrong, so I apologize. People can look up more information for the actual accurate study. But they divided uh, a classroom into two camps, or at least two groups of children into two camps. They had them both complete the same task, and they turned it in to the instructor, a teacher, a person of authority. And the authority person went away and then came back a little bit later and said, everyone got A pluses. Mm -hmm. Not like on a podium and said everyone got A's. Obviously, they told everyone individually that they got A pluses on it. They got a perfect score on whatever it was they did. They told half of the group that they got an A plus because they are naturally smart. Oh, I, I, I have this study in my stuff. It yeah. is here? Should yeah. I hold off then? No, no, no. You're good. Keep okay. going. So uh, they told half the group, you have an A plus because you are super smart. They told the other group that they got an A plus because they worked really, really hard and they studied really, really hard. The The summary of the ending, and you can explain it a little more, is that... The, they were offered a test. Mm -hmm. uh, one was more difficult, one was easier. Mm -hmm. And they were told beforehand that one was easier, one was more difficult. Mm -hmm. The ones were told that they got an A plus because they worked harder were significantly more likely to choose, I think it was like 86% of them, if I'm remembering what I read yesterday, mm -hmm. chose the harder test if they were rewarded for their hard work. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the majority, like I think it was almost 100% of the group that were told that it was because they were smart chose the easier test. I think you're conflating some things because there was the test and then there were the puzzles after the test. Okay, okay. so you're talking about a different study. Yes. There, there's multiple studies about this, about rewarding effort versus rewarding intelligence. Yeah, the one that I was talking about is after they separated them in groups where one thought they did it through genius, the other thought they did it through hard work, they then had them do puzzles. They, they segmented them out and they were working on puzzles. And uh, they had three different puzzles, like a super easy, medium, and hard. The group that was told they were really smart, they flew through the easy puzzles and they didn't really enjoy it that much because they assumed that they were easy, but they did not apply themselves to the medium and difficult puzzles. And some, most, would give up as they got to the harder puzzles and very few of them reported that they had a good time doing it. The other group, however, more likely to choose not only all the puzzles but the harder puzzles and they reported they had more fun working on the harder puzzles and what it was is like because they were told that their work and success was dictated by their hard work and work ethic they looked at tasks differently and they approached the task with like okay if i can figure this out and work hard at it, it's going to take work i will have success and they enjoy the process okay mm -hmm. and i fully understand that Oh, yeah, yeah. And we're, we're, we're going to discuss that a little bit further later on. Sure, sure. But it's one of those things that I don't think participation trophies reward work ethic like people think they do. Okay. I'm not saying that they are one way or another correct, in that correct. study. But like, it's one of those things that it shows the difference of rewarding effort versus rewarding intelligence or natural gift. Yes. Yeah. Based on merit. Like mm -hmm. it's it's your your ability to do something in that moment versus your ability to work hard to try and get to that point. Yes. But yeah, that's that's something we'll talk about in Act 3. Yeah. The other con that people have for participation trophies is they won't learn from mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's the sense that failure is a significant experience for every child. And so if you get a trophy and think you won no matter what, they don't realize that they made a mistake. So how are they going to improve upon those mistakes mm -hmm. to better themselves, to get better at the sport? Because it's like, oh, we didn't win, but I got a trophy. But now I, why should I try and improve if I'm getting the trophy anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's the argument is like rewards need to be earned so that you work towards them. Mm -hmm. It gives you something to get to. Yeah. The other thing in that is it's misled motivation. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's in here, it's not on this list, but it's one of those things that I think about is like, I look at my participation trophies and a lot of them, yeah, I'll remember the team. Mm -hmm. I hate them. They, they don't mean anything to me. There's mm -hmm. no value to them. They're, they're just there. 
Yeah. Like I could easily just toss them. I kept them all because I just want to have trophies mm -hmm. because they're there. It's like, cool. I want to look cool because I have all these trophies. And yeah. so when I have somebody over when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I was like, look at how good I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And majority of them are participation trophies. Granted, my teams generally did pretty well, except for in soccer because I didn't care about soccer. Uh -huh. But because you the, didn't care, and therefore the whole team didn't do well. Is that how it is? Well, no, that's not how it is. It was most of my teams in soccer didn't care. Mm -hmm. We were really little, mm -hmm. but it's one of those things that it's like there's not really any value that's given to it if you haven't earned it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just an object. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes me think about that moment, but at the same time, it's like I don't have any value in it. Because okay. it's one of those things that for things to have value, we have to have a perceived value of it. And if I'm just handed something, mm -hmm. like if you're just like, here's a pencil. This is for being at the office today. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But if I go, this coffee cup lid is made of 24 karat. Okay, that's gold. This was formed by Tim Cook, CEO of Apple's own hand. He handcrafted this one. And not only that, when it was passed down, it went through a Japanese artist you probably don't know, but very famous for many, many incredibly lifelike sculptures. And uh, he, he looked at this and he wept. He wept and his tears fell inside. That's what the moisture is in there. And I'm remiss to get rid of this coffee cup, but I'm in certain circumstances and I need to get treatment for my dog. So I'll, 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 I'll give it to you for a fraction of what is true worth is for $500. But that value's different. I'll give it to you for five hundred dollars, and my dog Chica. I give you. I would give you five hundred dollars to take care of Chica if you needed it. I, you don't need to give me anything. Five hundred dollars to take care of Chica. But that's that's a different sense of value, Mark. That's a sense of value in the sense of like monetary, uh, as opposed to intrinsic value. This coffee cup. When I look at it, I think of how much our friendship means to us. I think of all the years we spent together. You trusting me to come out here to L.A. Because if you remember, well, you probably don't. When I called you, I was drinking from the same cup of coffee and my lips touched this lid and I thought, there's no way you would trust me. Yet you did. And so I'm going to give this to you as a commemoration of our friendship and how much you mean to me. There you go. Take it. So I'm ta I would take this from you because uh -huh. you're my friend and I don't want to be like, no, mm -hmm. but... Um, you brought up a very touching moment in my life. <laughs> see, see, and, but, <laughs> you, you but think I want it. I want to think of that when I look at that. Oh, I think of might. that almost every day that I've been in LA yeah. and every chance I get to work with you because I remember where I was at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When that phone call happened, I was at work. I was selling cars. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly where I was standing. I can go to that car dealership and go to the exact point in which we had that conversation. And that coffee cup lid. That means nothing. <laughs> <to> me. <laughs> What means yeah. to me is the person sitting it across kinda, the table. Uh, you know, I'm going to leave this coffee cup lid right here on this table, and I'm not going to clean it up when I leave. And if it's here again when, <laughs> next Sunday, I'm going to know it had a little bit of meaning. Mark, you know me well enough. That'll be in the trash before you leave. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to you're gonna stand over that trash can for just like a moment, and you're just going to go oh, like, you're going to think, and you're going to go, nah, and then you're going to throw it away. The but only, it had some but value. The only reason would be because I'm like, <laughs> oh, will it hurt Mark's feelings? <laughs> it, <laughs> might, it might hurt my feelings. It would hurt my feelings no, if won't. you got rid of it. It would. Is, You'd forget about it. All this is literally <laughs> injecting value into this object because everyone listening to this is now aware that there is a That's coffee true. cup lid that you don't value, but I value. Therefore, it's weird because the universe is applying value to this coffee cup lid. If I put this on eBay right now, it may oh, not... somebody would buy it. Exactly, but it may not go just for the... Oh, it's commemorative. It's This is the one that was talked about on the episode. Yeah. Yeah, and it has multiple sources of value. Anyway, this is not me trying to disprove or prove anything, but it's like that's how intrinsic value is applied to something. It's applied because humans discuss something, make a ceremony about it, or give it meaning, and they all collectively agree, or at least some agree, that like, okay, it means something because it can be traced back to an event. And that inherently is a trophy or a memorabilia or commemorative thing. Humans yeah. like to do that in general. And what you're saying is participation trophies don't have that value. Because no one agrees that it actually means anything because nothing was done to earn it. Yeah. Okay. So, going into Act 3. What about the ugly? Fine, I'll get into the ugly. Fine. Hold off Act 3. Okay. Get back get off. Back. Get back. <laughs> All right. The ugly part is there's a lot of studies on participation trophies, and a lot of them are talking about how the negative psychological effects of it. 
Uh, Carl DeWick, a psychology professor at Stanford University, said too much praise such as participation trophies actually lead kids to shut down and give up when faced with difficulties. Mm -hmm. And this was done by uh, their studies where children are praised way too much for simply completing assigned tasks. They're rewarded too much. And what ends up happening is they think they're good enough in that moment so that they don't work to improve. And then when they don't get something that they want, they get upset and break down as opposed to realizing, oh, I need to work harder for this. Oh, I need to put in effort. So participation awards don't allow kids to develop a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Instead, they develop a mindset in which they deserve something, you know, if they haven't done Mm -hmm. enough to improve. Yeah. And the growth mindset is such a vital part of developing resilience and maturing into responsible adulthood. Mm -hmm. And with a growth mindset, Kids can learn from their mistakes and failures, whereas participation trophies implicitly say you weren't great like other kids, but you were good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then so it's he gets into the whole discussion of how like you shouldn't record kids out of your own misguidance sense of pity. We need to instill like growth and work ethic and wanting them to work harder and go an extra mile to win more meaningful prizes to get to more achievable success Mm -hmm. okay and this entire principle is backed by extensive research as he has spent his entire professional life studying growth mindsets and resilience uh her entire sorry i misspoke i misread i missed the r um she's found that while kids obviously enjoy receiving praise from their parents teachers coaches too much of it causes these issues another side effect would resort to cheating than of giving too much praise is high achieving children would rather resort to cheating than risk failure and disappointing those who constantly praise them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's it's one of those things where it's been researched. There's another one by Ashley Merriman, co-author of a 2013 book, who directly contradicts the idea that constant praise will make kids fearless and ambitious. She argues that it's the agony of defeat, not unearned praise that motivates kids and builds the heart of a champion. If they don't deserve an award, they don't get one. Simple as that. No participation trophies for kids. Put it away until they earn a real trophy. And this is what uh, Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker James Harrison came up with. And he talked about Kurt Warner also says they don't let kids pass classes for just showing up. So why are kids getting awards for this? But it turns out this has been proving to do more harm than good for kids in the future. So that's the opposite. So there's a constant debate between the two. Mm-hmm. And there's research that contradicts in different ways. Um, and this is the part that's ugly is there's no real answer. Mm-hmm. But there's a number of controversial subjects, brim on intense emotions and other stuff like that. But Jeff Waltz, head coach of the University of Louisville's women basketball team, has a prime example. He railed against participation trophies after his team lost a game. And he said, right now, the generation of kids that are coming through, everybody gets a damn trophy. What's that teaching kids? It's okay to lose. And unfortunately, it's our society. It's what we're building for. And so it's one of those things where he doesn't think that people are working hard enough because they don't have an external motivation. And this is, we get into extrinsic and uh, intrinsic motivations here. You're giving them an extrinsic motivator that isn't a motivator when it becomes a participation trophy. Mm -hmm. And you're rewarding people for just showing up or just signing up or just paying a fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason he brought that up is like, you know, there are plenty of kids that'll will whine and gripe when they don't get something for, for sticking through it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, rewards are only a small fraction of the issues that are going on with regard to dealing with motivations within sport. This always throws me when people are just like, that's the problem with this generation coming up. Whenever you feel like you are in a position of authority to make a big declarative statement on an entire yeah. generation of people, you know you're in the wrong because you are making a big declarative statement on an entire generation of people, which just makes you an old fuck. <laughs> and and you are completely ignorant to the many layers of things at hand, and you're trying to boil it down to something and just blame it on, on the weakness of the future. And, and whether or not, like, okay, I'll, I'll get into more detail about like my opinion on this after the third act but when it comes down to making each generation weaker that is literally disproven by the fact that people are breaking records every year and they're going farther because champions have better technology and nutrition and upbringings and learning and teaching they are getting stronger they are getting faster there's some people that fall behind of course or probably more but that's probably a sheer thing that there are more people participating as opposed to there there's only so many number one slots like literally that doesn't go up but the number of people that are trying for it increases which i think also like leads to more competition which leads to more people pushing themselves harder to achieve higher i it's like it's such a weird mindset to constantly i get it i get it you're trying to be opposing to something that you don't want and you don't like that's 
fine. Fine with that. But whenever you take it a step farther, be like, it's the, it's the goddamn kids and their TikToks and their Instagram. Oh, yeah. It's just like, just shut up. <laughs> no, I, I, I understand that point. Yeah. And that sentiment. So let's get into act three. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. The truth? Yes. All right. Are you prepared to declare I, I'm the I'm prepared truth. to declare the truth. Okay, okay. Okay. So the biggest thing is with trophies in sport, the only thing we reward is winning. Mm -hmm. It's about winning the championship. It's about winning the tournament and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, teams that should win should get an award. Mm -hmm. they, they should get something for their accomplishment. But the problem that exists within that mm -hmm. is you're rewarding just winning. And so when you're rewarding just winning, people will do anything to win. Like they talked about with cheating. Yeah. And it's also that topic of like some people are more naturally gifted at some things than others. Mm -hmm. Some people are different in size and different stuff like that. Like there are, we talked about this when we were talking about youth sports, like huge, big, tall players that are playing tackle football that could literally injure people. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why weight classes are there. And so it's like participation trophies. I understand the point, but I don't agree with them because they don't have meaning, mm -hmm. right? It's good for getting people to join. But at the end of the day, I don't find a value in a participation trophy. And I think we need to come up with a different thing than participation trophies and a different thing than winning trophies only. Right. Okay. And it's one of those things that because all these studies vary extremes in opinions mm -hmm. and extreme studies. The biggest problem that I see, though, is, is with the pro participation trophy group. They usually cite things that reward effort, mm -hmm. reward those things. Mm -hmm. Participation trophies don't do that. Yeah. A lot of times there are kids that get participation trophies because their parents force them into a sport and they don't care and they sit there and pick grass in a baseball field or stuff like that. I've seen it in my life growing up. I've seen it in adulthood yeah. in a lot of ways where people get hired and don't do their job. Yeah. And it drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, yeah, maybe participations have a small fault in that, but a lot of times there's a lot more factors that affect that person. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that could potentially do it, which is why I personally don't like participation trophies. Uh -huh. I see the good and the bad. They're not going to go away, so there's no point in fighting that. Mm -hmm. The way to, to really start doing stuff that is meaningful, in my opinion, is to reward things that are worth rewarding. Mm -hmm. And that's not just winning. Mm -hmm. That's rewarding people for improving for sportsmanship in particular god i was so proud to win sportsmanship awards mm -hmm. because it was like the team was like this dude did everything he could for the team mm -hmm. my senior year i switched positions in water polo to go from being an all-state goalie to playing field i didn't get all state yeah i personally thought i was good enough to be all state and there were players that got all state that over me that i was better than but that's fine Mm -hmm. But I got the sportsmanship award and I was so happy to get that award because it was something we've all of the awards in the water polo team we voted on mm -hmm. and the coaches did it. So I got most improved and sportsmanship throughout my career. And it was one of those things that it was so meaningful to me that people thought of me as the person that was like, I'm going to be a good sport about something mm -hmm. because that to me is a value in life is being able to treat people with respect and kindness, whether you win, whether you lose, regardless. Mm -hmm. Just like that player going over and hugging somebody, because I give value into people. Mm -hmm. Those are the awards that mean a lot. And if you reward people for effort and you reward people for improvement and you reward people for that, you're actually spurring positive traits with extrinsic motivation to achieve things. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, hey, you signed up, you paid a fee, you get this. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, that's just lazy. And at the end of the day, if you have a kid, and this is, uh, Bob and I actually had this discussion once because he he has a different viewpoint than mine and he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. But he was like, I can just go and get a trophy. If I was a kid, I'd just go and get myself something. What now? And I'm like, well, you had to earn the money to go and pay for that. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the parents. Like, there's this whole socioeconomic problem on that front. But it's mm -hmm. one of those things where it's like, there's still a level of you had to earn something to be able to get that. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's okay to have participation trophies. I just think there needs to be a greater value put on it. And people need to pay attention to the bigger factors outside of winning, mm -hmm. especially at the youth level, because you want to reinforce growth. All right. I asked like uh, about 20 minutes ago on our Discord. If you're not on our Discord, go to the GMFST subreddit and you can find a link to the Discord to be invited. Um, but I asked about like what they thought of participation trophies. And I, let me tell you, that sparked a bigger debate. It is still going on. Yeah, talking about it because it apparently is this like back and forth about a lot of people with a lot of different viewpoints. What I think it all boils down to, and I'm I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying. Well, I mean, probably, but I can't recite your entire thing right now, so I don't know. But for the most part, I, I agree with what you're saying. But I think it boils down to 
communication and not in terms of like a team communicated with each other. Literally the topic being communicated causes conversations because of the interesting quirks of how humans communicate. Because humans, as a sense, we all want to apply meanings to things. As soon as we hear something we have never heard before, we automatically, subconsciously apply meaning retroactively to that with what we already understand. When you hear the term participation trophy, most people know what this trophy is. Most people know what participation is. You combine the two together, that's not usually something that you've heard before. And therefore, it's a new thing. And therefore, you have to create a new definition in your own head about it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who have won trophies in the past might go participation trophy. And you might be instinctively mad because you go like, wait, I earned my trophies. They're giving them out for participation. This is where the older generations would get upset instinctively right. because they hear that and their brain is subconsciously going like, well, that invalidates all of my efforts because they have to apply a meaning to this new topic that they've never heard before. And therefore the default mode goes backwards and tries to be like, what does this mean? It means they're insulting me and my efforts. That is what happens. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that's for everybody, but that is what happens. Because if you ask anybody that's received a participation trophy like yourself like me i don't care about it no one cares about it it's kind of that's that's what and that's the kind of thing it's like the topic of discussion is self-defeating because it doesn't matter because the people that receive participation trophies know that it means nothing because there are two definitions right there's a definition that people understand when they take it in and they learn and have to apply a meaning and then there's the definition that has been learned about participation trophies everyone knows everyone in the world knows that a participation trophy now is meaningless because there are people that have grown up and gotten it and know that it's meaningless and have people shout at them that it's meaningless and it's disgraceful to even try to apply meaning to it. Therefore, it has a weird negative meaning. But in the moment in which you received that trophy and stuff like that, you don't realize that. Of course, yeah. And, and that's wherein there's different things that can happen. And not everybody realizes mm -hmm. that participation trophies are useless. And I've ex experienced encounters with these people before mm -hmm. and that they're meaningless is there are people there that think there's a correlation to it and it's not necessarily true, but there, and this happens in every generation where there are people that believe that they deserve more when they do less. Yeah. They deserve more credit when they don't, they haven't put in the effort to earn said credit. Mm -hmm. There's things within corporations and stuff like that. Like we could get into how, like, I can't think of the term nepotism mm -hmm. where they just, it's like, Oh, it's my kid. So he gets the promotion over this person who's worked their yeah. butt off. Yeah. But it's, it's also an interesting quirk in, in human social hierarchy where when trying to account for minority groupings within things causes more vitriol yeah. in groups. It's it's uh, not always like a good or a bad thing. It's like it doesn't have to be like a, a terminology in like a minority group of people. But uh, specifically, these cases come up where you argue something and you're like the grouping of people that think they deserve more but want to work less is technically a very small subset of Correct. participants in sports. And then, but it's elevated to this incredible level of importance or like, or d unimportance where they're like uh, arguing against it for the sake. It's for both camps. People use like the tiniest outlying cases for extremes of their arguments. And well, and it's, it's, it's also one of those things that we try to, as humans, we like to have an answer for something exactly. and explain yes. something yeah. when inherently that very well may not be the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is where why I say it all boils down to communication. Yeah. This is a communication issue as opposed necessarily to the actual argument of the item itself. It kind of like echoes past it and people forget why they were arguing in the first place. When in reality, you're totally right. It's putting emphasis on the wrong thing. If instead what was commemorated and it's a commemoration of participation, not necessarily a trophy or anything, was a picture. Yes. If you had, you went to this and a pre-ritual in this per event, before you even participated, before you even know you won or lost, the whole team sat down, took a picture, and you got a framed picture before any competition happened as not a participation trophy, but as a memorabilia so you could remember that you were there. It doesn't mean anything in, unless you apply. It's like a yearbook, right? Yeah, and it's like yeah. you look back and those those are friendships. It's, those are people that you've interacted with. You can have that memory and see mm -hmm. that and it instills that in you. Because huh? there is intrinsic value in being at a place with your team. 
Yeah. If you care about your team, if you don't Correct. care about your team, then it doesn't have meaning. It is all within and what you apply to yourself. And it's like this level of awarding is not dictated by people that are outside of yourself. The individual that is a part of either a team or an individual sporting event, they have to apply meaning to something. And having these external forces of like, oh, this trophy, if you win, that is everyone agrees that's big. And I have no say of whether that is important if I have not been a part of it. Therefore, I can't apply any meaning to it. But you being at a place is a personal thing. It, a lot of things are personal things that other people want to butt and elbow into. It's like, hey, wait a minute. You can't care about this. It's not building up your character, weird, strange child I don't know. You know, it's like it's it's people want to insert themselves. And it's also the problem of of ego in these things of like I have an opinion and everyone wants an opinion. And what you were saying about everyone wants an answer is like, therefore, if I have it, I must be right. People default that they are right when people fail to realize that the majority of time or at least half of the time, they're probably wrong. I mean, my my personal belief, I hate participation trophies. I hate the participation trophies that I have. I think it does instill the wrong idea. Sure. But at the same time, if you actually define participation, they actually have to give effort. Mm -hmm. And if they give effort, then it's like, yeah, they should get something for that effort. Mm -hmm. But I like the way that you phrased it. Instead of giving you just this piece of plastic that's on a marble slab, if anything, most of the mm -hmm. time, it's just a whole piece of plastic. Yeah. Give them something that actually calls back to that. It's yeah. a picture. Yeah. It's that in and of itself can be a trophy. Yeah. It's a rock. Yeah. That's why I talk about money. Money is rocks. Exactly. Everything's rocks. All things that humans value are meaningless unless you, or unless a person, you or anyone else applies value to it. And, and if someone applies value to something and they show you that thing and they cannot convince you, if they cannot communicate its value to you so that you understand how much they care about it, then that's a breakdown of communication. And this is where things get these. And that's why, like, you'll see it in politics all the time. People want to boil something down to one word, buzzwords, because they know the majority of people anyway won't look any deeper than that buzzword. And that's where, like, participation trophy, like, I'm not saying. I'm different just because I'm look trying to look around the words. Uh, but it's like, that is what it is. The words are a wall. The words are a wall that prevent people from going to deeper meaning. And many times when you look at things, you have to understand, words are just translations of thought. Thought doesn't speak English. Thought doesn't speak any language. It's electrical signals in your brain and it's feelings and chemical, uh, like, uh, switches and banks in your head and translating those into words aren't perfect even if you are trying to translate and understand the thoughts in your head that's why you can't find the right words sometimes to describe your emotion this is all feeling and before we get into the conclusion i want to just cite a couple of other things because we talked about this that studies vary as much as opinions do mm -hmm. but some research shows children who are praised for efforts and rewards like participation medals and trophies were more likely to try harder and do better mm -hmm. psychologist Steve Arcadia Cano, A R C I D I A C O N O. Cool name. Ar Arcadia Cano said, You've got to ask yourself, what is the point of giving someone a medal or trophy? There has to be some sort of meaning. There has to be some inherent value. There has to be something that makes it valuable to that person mm -hmm. and makes it meaningful. And it's one of those things that even when you're rewarding effort, sometimes people will then start faking effort. So you have to really pay attention mm -hmm. and also realize why participation trophies came about to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, the origin of it was actually because they wanted to increase people to actually get into sports mm -hmm. and get physically active. Yeah. And so having those there is not inherently taking away from the other trophies that are there. If you win, most of the trophies are bigger and more elaborate and they have greater value because you win. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the most meaningful trophies to me are not the state championship trophy that yeah. I don't have that's at Milford. The most meaningful trophies to me are the ones that are inherently valuable to myself, mm -hmm. whether it's the stories that went along with it, the team that was there, or like I got to play baseball with my dad as a coach. Mm -hmm. Not very many people get to do that. Yeah. And so the value that I have in trophies is less about winning yeah, I have a tons of stories about winning, a ton, but most of my stories are about the cool things that I did. Mm -hmm. And those trophies are a reminder of that. Yeah. So that at the end of the day, as much as I hate participation trophies and I think they're there for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think in the grand scheme of things, they're not going away for one. And part two, there's too much that says that they're okay and good for me to call out and be like, get rid of them, that's dumb. No, because it's like people need to be rewarded for doing things mm -hmm. and not rewarded for just winning. 
Yeah, and I, I completely agree with that. And it's like it's people have a tendency to focus on the wrong goals. They 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 are result oriented no matter what. If I have a cattle prod and I am like, I need you to build that desk for this podcast that we're trying to build and i say i'm gonna you better build that desk or i'm gonna hit you with the cattle prod that is one way that might get the desk built it's not a very nice way it's to not motivate really way, not. It, might, it might get very good results for me not for you yep or if i say all right you and me we're going to sit aside and we're going to get some beers we're going to order pizza and we're going to just like get here at this time and we're going to build the desk together that desk will get done in maybe less time because we'll be talking out of fun but we'll have a good memory out of it well and at the same time if like multiple minds make greater like everything mm -hmm. creative ingenuity yeah. greater products are usually done when there's not just one person in a echo chamber it's when people lend and collaborate mm -hmm you get a greater product in general. Yeah, it's the same thing about like being on set. There's directors that yell and scream and lash out at people. I find it much easier to try to coerce everyone on crew to fall in love with the project as much as I do. Everyone being on the same page and making an incredible, memorable experience as opposed to uh, worrying about like, making the best thing at all costs or winning the thing at all costs or doing anything like excessive, no matter who you step on. Yes, you might win and you could get far doing that. And yes, it, sometimes you need to do that it, to survive in the world or to succeed. There are no perfect answer for every situation. But generally speaking, the more you make people enjoy the experience, the time that they put in, and everything human just boils down to spending time doing things, whatever it is, with who you're doing them with. If you make those memorable, people will then look back at those little memorable pieces and they'll look back and even if there aren't participation trophies if you take your kid and they lost and you take them aside and you tell them how proud you were of them because you saw the effort that they put in that'll have so much more meaning than any trophy even winning a trophy ever could yeah like you said it's when people feel valued they're going to work harder for the project mm -hmm. when they feel like they're a part of it and can like contribute and care and care, yeah. they're going to put greater effort into it and put their best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And as a last note, like on participation trophies, obviously it inherently gets people interested. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, it's also makes it so that coaches aren't incentivized to have kids sit mm -hmm. because they're not good enough. Yeah. It's incentivized to let everybody play. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing in motivation is like, if I'm a kid and I join a sport and I'm on the bench the whole time, I'm hating everything about being on that team. Mm -hmm. I'm being made fun of by the other players like, ha oh, you suck, you're not playing. And, and I'll admit, I was naturally good at sports and there were kids that I kind of treated that way. And I regret that looking back on it. And it's, it's one of those things. But the biggest thing that I loved about my baseball team with my dad and Reed Chaxfield mm -hmm. was the fact that everybody played. When he put in the lineup card, the rule was in baseball, you do nine and nine, nine fielders, nine batters. We always batted everybody. And the only reason we were allowed to do that is we always sold the other team that it was a disadvantage for us to bat everybody. But we worked hard and everybody in our lineup could hit. Some could hit better than others, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the key part was we made sure growing up that everybody got to play. And at the end of the day, they're supposed to be fun, right? Yeah, that's the whole point of sports. If winning was everything, sports would suck. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, what do we know? Well, we don't know anything. Yeah, we're just the number one sports podcast in the world. In the, in the world. Someday soon. Uh, retroactively, when that's true in the future, we'll be able to look back on these fond memories. Our participation trophies. <laughs> 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 journey there need to be podcast participation trophies because we are here and we're showing up every week and thanks to you we're able to keep showing up every week so get your podcast participation trophies at store.gmfst.com you gotta buy them we got the new shirt is uh should be coming out pretty soon the mm -hmm. uh the one that matches the hat i don't know if it's posted yet because it's I got everything confirmed on Friday and it's the weekend, so. You don't have to buy anything. Just go check out the merch store. It's really fun. Store.gmfst.com. There's a great hat there. I love the hat. I have the hat, but 
You don't have to get the hat. Just take a I'm look. I'm going to get the hat. Let me just get my money first. Yes. And then also check out the YouTube channel. There's the new live action video that's up there where I teach Mark how to throw a perfect spiral. A perfect spiral. Um, and a whole bunch of other animations and more stuff to be tuned in for as we continue on. Make sure and download and subscribe and listen and follow. Wherever you listen and on the podcast listening apps, um, download is probably the most important set that we try and get according to our people that tell us how podcasts work. Yeah, more stuff. That's mean more guests, and we have guests coming in that you are going to be very excited about. I'm so excited about them. As soon as this studio is ready that's under construction, it's going to be fun. Yes. Make sure and subscribe to that YouTube channel specifically, because eventually we're going to be doing live episodes and doing live streams there. Yes, sounds good. Anyway, I got to get my cattle rod. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. I'll it, Mark. No, I'll you better it. get to it. I'll bet it. All right. Where is the bun? Yeah. All right, so I actually made some a lot of progress. It was a long one, so it, it, I got some progress done. I don't know if you can see it, but um, you know, what? let me finish this row first. Okay. Uh, what do I want to talk about? Okay, so about the participation trophy. So here's my thought, like. I agree with Tyler in the fact that partici participation trophies are kind of dumb, but like I never got one, so I wouldn't know the first thing of receiving a trophy. You know, I never got a trophy. I only got an award, like a little medal for participating in a. Well, I guess that is called that is technically a participation trophy, but I never got like a physical like statue trophy or like a cup trophy that can put on my shelves or, or or something like that but like if I have to say something if you want someone to work really hard but still give participation part, part, participate the trophy if you want to still give them the trophy this is what I recommend right this is only my recommendation right to make things everything fair and maybe a little more like I don't know, like, morally, like, okay, if they have that cool trophy, I want it. Like, okay, so here's my idea. Make the winner's trophy way too extravagant. Like, so extravagant, it's, like, ridiculous of how extravagant that, that thing is, right? Like, make it so glittery, much bigger, a lot of shiny stuff on it, you know, stuff like that. And then make theirs, like, either, like, a ribbon or... You know what? No, just like a ribbon. Just give the other team like a ribbon that says participation or you or good job. Then that they could be like, but they got a big trophy. They got a big trophy because they won. If you want to win, you can try harder, work harder, and maybe you'll win next time. But good job, you did it. That's my that's my interpretation and that's my opinion. And if you don't like it. Shove it up your ass because I don't care. Um, but yeah, that was a very good episode of, of Go. I want to buy the shirt and the hat. I do, but I don't have money. But, good news, I apparently have a new manager that I didn't know of. I had been emailing my ex-manager for like three weeks. Didn't hear anything. Have a new manager. Now he's telling me, okay. Do you want a schedule? Here. Here's a schedule. Are you able to work then? And when are you able to work? I'm said, oh, yeah, I can work then. Yeah, I can do those times. And I can work as soon as possible. So, yeah. Your, your boy's gonna work. Because, here's the thing. I love kids so much. I love kids so much. I miss kids, you know? Like... I don't know if you see in like any of my videos, but I do have like a little um, happy 22nd birthday Maddie from my kids uh, last last year um, when I was in in the schooling. They did they just made me like a li really cool poster for my 22nd birthday, so you know it's 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 hanging on my door. It's very cute. I, there's all the kids' names and everything. Some some of made drawings. It's very cute. It's very cute. Yeah. But it, it, that was cute. But anyway, 
Uh, enough about that. But I really do. Oh, why can I not talk today? I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. It's a bit of a long one, but you know, we expected that from a podcast, right? From a podcast. So let me finish up this row right here. Um, hold on. I gotta look at the. Okay. I got it. I got it. Let me finish up this row. I'll be with you. But I'm, re I'm really curious of what you guys think of participation trophies. I mean, you guys know my opinion. Maybe if I ask Dad what his opinion is on participation trophies, and if he even has any trophies, and if they, if he does, like, where are they? Like, he, I don't see any trophies around here that are from him. You know. But yeah. I know that my cousin Gio has some participation trophies and some like little league trophies from when he was doing the league, but yeah. Alright, I finished the row. Alright, so anyway. Um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We are currently, let me see, as of this moment. As of this moment, we have um, 24 subscribers. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. 24 is a lot of people. That's a lot of people. No one thinks that's a lot because that's like, oh, that's just 24. That's so small. Like, that's a lot of people. That's like a whole classroom almost. That, that's literally a lot of people. Anyway, thank you for subscribing. Make sure you subscribe, you share, and make sure other people subscribe, you know, because I'm a fun guy. I'm sorry. I make bad jokes, don't <laughs> subscribe on your own risk. I make bad jokes and I'm a nerd. So, <laughs> anyway, this has been into the ADDY. I don't know, but I'll see you guys next time of next week on the